Hi and welcome everybody to uh, this week's podcast for the uh, week beginning the 19th of April. Um, hi Denny. Hi everyone. Uh, I think I'm going to dive in first this week and talk a little bit about the uh, numerology and the Akasha and also the card that I chose this week for the energies that are supporting you now. So we're in week 16 of the year, and this brings a lot of 16 slash seven energy into the week ahead. So this 16, seven energy can feel a little intense and it can feel quite uncomfortable to sit in. Uh, and it can bring up themes that are related to things like secrets and hidden motives and betrayal. So ooh, really big themes going on there. Um, and because we're in a nine month, we are also sitting in a time of endings and deep emotion and letting go. So this week, there's a lot of those kind of energies going on. So the themes of that 167 energy may be surfacing this week. Um, so if you if you're going through things like that at the moment, you're sure to notice that energy in some way. And it feels quite extreme. So the, the good thing to understand is if those themes are coming up for you, it's important to address them now. I mean, being in the nine energy, it's about observing it, letting it surface, and then releasing it and clearing it and letting go. So it's paying attention to what's lying underneath the surface of those themes. Um, of course, it's only going to experience in your life if you are experiencing those sorts of things going on. It's not going to pop up just out of nowhere if you're not. And then seven is also, just to look at it from a, a different way, it's also the energy of consciousness, of intuition, of insight going inwards going deep within so it's got that beautiful energy to it as well um, and it also is a number that relates to learning and because it's guiding you into introspection it's likely this week that you'll find yourself going in deeper and deeper within yourself to learn more about yourself so that's a kind of really beautiful positive side to the seven energy um, it's kind of an invitation, I think, to dive deep within yourself this week, but you will, of course, need to create the space for that. I mean, we all have to create the space to, um, to dive into our intuition and dive in deeply. Um, what else do I tell you? Um, this, we're sitting in um, an, a five year, so the collective energy of the five year 2021 energy is also a constant energy that weaves throughout your life this year. So that's always sitting underneath the sort of weekly or monthly energies that you're working with. Um, and we're in the fourth month of April, so uh, of the year uh, being April. So you can also begin, I think, at this time to see the themes of four and five energies at play, particularly over the next couple of weeks as we go into the end of, was it two weeks? Yeah, two weeks to the end of April. So the four archetype is related to order, um, systems, perseverance and determination. They're all really big themes for that four energy. Whilst five is related more to freedom and quick change, so changing things. So we're seeing this play out at, um, at the moment through massive changes, of course, within the structures and systems that we have in place that are no longer serving us or supporting us. They're all starting to break down now and change. But at a personal level, because of the month that we're in, you may also be recognizing where your own foundations need to change as well. Your foundations are created by... Uh, the structures and systems that you personally work with. And that can be things like your belief system, your relationships, how you live your life by your own rules or 
by someone else's rules. So I think you're going to get some invitations this week to explore all of those different things. And it's quite a big week ahead um, if you're working with the numbers. And then I drew my card, which I drew um, this one, the Eight of Wind uh, from that Shamanic Tarot by uh, Sue Kovacs. And um, I mean, this card seems to represent uh, to me the energies really that I've just been talking about in regards to creating freedom from anything really that is stopping you moving forwards, limiting you or preventing you you from growing I feel again that it really guides you inwards it's guiding you inwards to look at yourself and notice where you might just be getting in your own way and what you need to clear around that so it feels like a very supportive energy to be working with this week and then quickly I did dive into the Akasha this morning just to have a quick check in to see what was going on for the collective and to also uh, just talk about or, or just ask about the collective energies for this week and I was shown that there is a lot going on both externally within the collective and internally within yourself so there's a lot shifting at the moment that you may not be aware of because it's collective energy but if you're sensitive to collective energies then you may be noticing that in some way but you're also shifting a lot internally at the moment um, and I was shown that you cannot transition through this time of great change without these changes happening. They have to happen. In fact, it is how consciously you make your personal changes that will eventually lead to the changes within the collective itself. So, you know, every little piece that we work on within ourselves is really going to sort of filter out into the collective shift that's happening. So you can work through these changes, I was shown. Um, anything that is rising for you at the moment, it's a case of welcoming it in, um, withholding that deep understanding that it would not be surfacing for you now if you weren't ready for it. So the overall message from the Akasha today was change is good, change will create what you really want for yourself, and change is what is ultimately going to heal the world. So big message from the Akasha. <laughs> just, just that little, little thing. <laughs> yeah, let's just do that thing, let's heal the world. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and that was me for today. Thanks for that, Fee. That was beautiful. Um, I have been starting most of my days um, getting up and going for a walk down to the beach, as I think I've mentioned to you a few times. And um, I've been wanting to because I, I keep missing the sunrise and I've been really wanting to see the sunrise. Um, and this morning, uh, Ricky, my partner, woke me up at six o'clock and said, quick. And we walked down there and um, I had this beautiful moment of the sun. We just got there in time. It was just as it was peaking above the sunrise. Um, and I'm doing this embodied astrology astronomy course at the moment. So a little bit about me connecting with the skies on that like um, uh, physical level is, is to do with that. Um, and uh, I was thinking this morning about the astro astronomy course that I'm doing, which is connecting to the stars. And I'm there in, in the beginning of the day with the sun rising. And I'm thinking, well, I'll I'll connect with the star that's in front of me, which is the sun, the sun that completely um, obliterates the sky for all the other stars to be seen. But this huge star that is um, our most important star here on earth. Um, and I was tuning in and part of the course is to have this conversation as I love to do with, with things around me, nature and earth. And, and I had a conversation with the sun as in, I said, what do you wanna tell me today? And I just imagined the planet going back in time and me going back in time and um, being, a, being on this planet before there was any man-made things. So here I am on land and I'm just um, having this pr um, the presence of the sun rising as I might have if I was 
in the caveman days. And it, it occurred to me how incredibly important um, the sun um, and the traveling of the sun through the sky and the stars and the moon, that they would have been like our television screens because we wouldn't have had anything else. So that would have been this, this, this um, program that happened all during the day or a book or a story that was happening all during the day and the month and the seasons. And it gave me this whole different appreciation for this massive star um, that was above me. Um, and as I got home to prepare for this for this podcast, I just sort of tuned into the day because I'm looking, you know, then wanting to know a little bit more about the astrology. And I realized that it's the 19th of April. And between the 19th, well, depending on where you are in the world, that's the 19th or the 20th that we swap from Aries into Taurus. And it was just such a beautiful moment of knowing that I, I greeted the sun on the last degree of the day that it's in Aries. And tomorrow morning, I'm gonna do the same thing. And as I see the sun rise, it will rise in the sign of Taurus. So I, I, it was just a beautiful moment of being there between these two points, the Aries and the Taurus, um, and those energies that are that, that we're swapping between. It's, it's, a big, it's a big day, this next 24 hours when we go through that cycle, it's a big change from fire into earth from the I am into the I have. And the I am month of Aries, you know, we've talked about really searching through and finding out what is important, what is in your heart, what do you want to put out into the world? Well, we're moving into the I have month, the Taurus. And I get a really clear feeling that what we need to do, well, actually I'm going to bring in the card now because I then picked a card. And the card I picked is the empty room, um, which is kind of where the sun put me this morning. It, it got rid of everything else out of my room and just put me into the oneness of me and the stars and the sky with no other distractions. And as we go into the Taurus month, the month of manifesting and, and, and of the I have, um, it's a beautiful time to think about what you have in your room and what you might need to clear away so that you can really create a space of the things that matter the most. So many of us um, bring things into our lives in order to distract us from something. We've become such a consumer culture. So we just bring in and bring in and have this new and want that new and, and it's become about things. But do they really align with who we are so we've come out of the I am now as we go into this next astrological sign we really need to be thinking about do the things that I bring into my life align with who I am so I invite you to maybe um, clear your rooms um, make them empty and then see what arises see what you really um, value. It's actually a beautiful time to be thinking about what do I value and do the things around me align with what I value and um, what I want to have around me? Do they reflect who you really are? Uh, so that's that's the empty room. It's It's clearing away and allowing the space of emptiness to um, because it's not actually empty. What happens when we clear our space of things is the real stuff. Stuff begins to um, surface. Uh, and that can be uncomfortable. I think I've spoken about that before. But um, stay in that space um, because there's so much to be found that isn't the physical. Um, that might arise from from clearing your space of that physical and you might find all the hidden gifts that are there um, potentially the stuff that's inside that is the the real the real stuff the real guts where you're going to find your gifts um, and what maybe you have to bring to the world um, so this month again it, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of um, Venus energy um, this week in particular, we have Venus 
um, crossing with uh, Uranus, who's the rule breaker. Um, and then a few days later, um, crossing with Mercury, who's the communicator. And I think that that was that, that tension that you were talking about, Fee. I, I was getting the sense that this week you could be coming up against some, um, there, there could be some, there's a bit of argumentative energy around, you know, with those you love. Um, so so that, that place of uh, the people around you who you love, you may be coming up against some challenges um, in the way you normally do things, the way you normally relate to each other. Um, and you've been asked to maybe look at things in a, um, in a different way. Maybe there's a different way of relating that um, is trying to come through. And that's going to be uncomfortable because you might be, not be asked to break some of your rules. And um, that's a good thing. That's change. And as Fee said, the change can be a really beautiful thing, but can also be a very uncomfortable place. So that's also the energy of, of this um, week. Some of the questions um, based on this um, exploration I had with the sun this morning uh, for you to think about this week is where are you putting your value? What are you filling your world with? Um, what needs to go from your world in order for, uh, in order to bring in the new? Um, I remember when I was a new mum and um, I'd have a toddler that was uh, we used to go into um, uh, uh, little um, spats or we would just want and want and want. Um, one thing that I learned was um, when you're when they've been really distracted, when little kids have been really distracted or they seem to want more and more and more, is you empty their bedroom and you just put in the bedroom what's really important. And then you put things back in one by one rather than having them surrounded by too many things. And in a kind of a way, that's what I'm envisioning in my head is, is just um, coming from that place of nothing and only putting in the really important things into your world and seeing, is this now of value? Does this have value to me? Do I need anything else or is this enough? Um, and then there's another question of do the things that you have around you reflect who you really are? What is truly important to you? Um, as we move into Taurus, uh, another thing that I just I, I is it, just want you to maybe reflect on is um, it's what's been coming up for me is that we're in this world where we value so much what people have. Um, the people that have influence of, over us um, often have a lot um, and somehow or other that's become um, such a respected thing is having a lot of money um, um, to be able to make decisions for the rest of the world. Um, there was this uh, podcast I was listening to about the fact that Elon Musk is putting satellites up into the, into the atmosphere and it feels like there's a few people on this planet that have a lot of say over the rest of the people on the planet. And somehow or other, the energy of that feels to be really big right now. Um, I think with Uranus in the sign of Taurus, that, that rule breaker in the sign that we're about to move into Taurus, um, it feels like those big questions um, about where we're sitting and where we are and where the whole world is, the collective, how that influential part of the collective over us is a really important thing for us to um, consider. So like you said, Fee, a pretty big <laughs> week. Um, I also once again love how we come at it from two different places and seem to arrive at the same place. Yes, I love that too. And there's a, a just to reflect something from what you said there, it's just we're in such a big time of pulling apart really money and power because they've been so interwoven in our psyche for so long. Um, and we need to start to view them and work with them differently. And, you know, so that, that 
theme that's running there that you were talking about and were being asked to look at. I know that this is coming up for a lot of people at the moment. They're healing their relationships with money. So, you know, whatever woundings we hold personally around money and finances is coming up to be healed so that we can step forward in a different way because money is just an energy. It's just an energy like anything else. But it's been so connected with power in the world that we've built that it's difficult for people to see them as two separate mm. things. And so now we're being asked to pull them apart so that we can work with them in different ways. You know, we're moving into a time of heart-based power and money has nothing to do with that. So we need to segregate or separate them within ourselves so that we can then, um, just move forwards in a different way, in a changed way. This is one of the changes that we're being asked to go through at the moment. Mm. I love that. That's perfect. Because you know it's an energy that I've been working with for the last mm. month and, and separating that, that, that uh, the money piece. And yeah, I'm just totally um, feeling the embodied experience of that, pulling that piece apart. It's um, pretty amazing and powerful. Oh. It is because when you actually do pull it apart, you realize money has nothing to do with your power, nothing to do with it whatsoever. However, our perception, our belief system, I mean, sometimes, I mean, some of the people that I'm working with, we're actually, um, you know, shifting their whole belief system because it's based on that money and power and that they are the same thing. So, yeah, it's really interesting, I think, to dive into those themes at the moment. Absolutely. Um, also, I'm going to say that uh, this week, at the end of the week, I, I'm doing a circle where I dive into the energies of the astrology in a um, physical embodied way. Um, so if anyone is interested in getting a completely different experience around um, an embodiment practice where you, you're diving into what's going on in the st stars and skies and astrology, um, I would love to invite you to uh, um, look in Facebook or at something that'll, that, that'll pop up. I might put something on the post of this, um, be in touch. Um, uh, is there anything you want to say after that, Fee? No, just that you hold beautiful space around that process. So if anybody's really keen to, to, you know, to try those practices, it would be a great space to go and do it. Beautiful. Well, that's it for us for another week. And um, we'll join you next week for the last week of April. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.